Jesus Christ did miracles throughout his earthly existence. Well, if you he is yourself? God, then truly that had to happen. Do you believe miracles? Well, I didn't until I got out a little bit more of the U.S. Not just one, Haiti. but like multiple, multiple. I mean, Jesus did a lot from changing water to wine, which is like a party trick to me. Uh -huh. to like it's raising a guy from the dead, which is, you know. I yeah. mean, the, there's a great medieval exhibit over there if you want to check it out. I mean, this is like 1,500 type of ideas on college campus. It's a tough sell, I give you that. It's cold. You know, I respect your faith, but, I, you know, how am I supposed to swallow what, this what's as your a faith? 21st century gentleman? Sure, sure. Have you been to Haiti or Africa? Parts well, I know we're getting America? off topic. I, I don't think we're getting off topic, and here's why. You ask me what I believe. Because we live in a technological, materialistic age. Hey, I'm with you on Scientific that. age. And so if we're seeing everything like through the lens of technology, materialism, and science. So you're into voodoo? How can you we think begin to true? look at, we even on, begin voodoo. to look in to the miraculous. When I was in Haiti, I'm telling you, just about everyone I ran into in Haiti believed in the supernatural and the miraculous. Hey, my brother was in Africa. Let me tell you, if I was in Haiti thing. and there so was a voodoo it's priest, ethnocentric, I wouldn't, it's I, ethnocentric I wouldn't to stand cause here trouble. and I say, I, to stand here and say, oh, uh, there's no way. Come on, you believe that stuff? That's absolutely ridiculous. I would say you've been influenced by David Hume and your culture way more so the than Scottish actually getting out and understanding. Absolutely. Yes. David Hume is what who ultimately upended our understanding of the miraculous. He questioned it the most and did a brilliant job. So I would say step back out of your cultural climate, try not to be ethnocentric, we both are prone to that, and I, say, okay, I don't go to college here, I don't have to worry about all <laughs> Well, just because you don't go to college here, yeah. I, I would say you do have to worry about this stuff. Yeah. If there is an eternal life, and if there is exclusive truth. If not, then you're right. It really doesn't matter what you believe. Or what Religion you always spells truth with a capital T like they know it. You know what I mean? They got their book, it's all ready to go, there's your user manual, all the questions are answered. It is very intellectually seductive, but is any of it true? So I would say you're religious. No. no In Latin, wow. religio means binding things together. I believe you have many different faith presuppositions, probably that you don't even realize. For you to stand out here and say, I'm an agnostic, I can prove non -theist. everything. Okay. I don't like atheists. What's an agnostic they got an attitude. What's an agnostic non theist? Agnostic That's means. a long term. Yeah, I know, I know, but I thought this through. Agnostic means I really don't know, but non theist means, like, for day to day, as of what I know right now, based on what I'm going on, you know, I, I don't believe. I'm a non theist, I'm an atheist, but agnostic means, all right, you know, I don't know everything either. I acknowledge the limitations of my knowledge, but based on everything I've received so far, it doesn't look good. I'm going with non theism. That's where I, you know, I don't like atheists. They're smug. They're smug. They're intent on telling everybody, you know, Proving the existence of their superior intelligence is more important than, than anything else. Uh, I, I just don't like the attitude. I don't like the word. It's like if God appeared, they'd shake their fist and say, you know, I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I want to go back to your... It's just the attitude. You sure, know, sure. Just, there's, uh, yeah. Right, but you're I'm, getting it. I pretty much agree. But, you know, but I, I don't like their attitude. I respect faith, unlike a lot of people. I, I really do. Okay, it was fascinating what you said about truth with a capital T when it comes to religious texts. Yeah. I think that's very interesting. Yeah. I would say the smugness of atheism or the smugness of a Christian standing out here or the smugness of an agnostic, anybody can be smug. That's why we live in a hyper-tolerant culture where people fire back against a type of smugness. And part of that is very good. I think we go over the top and become too tolerant when we say, no, don't share your views. They could offend me in some kind of way and they actually hurt my sense of self and identity. That's when we go wrong, and we have all kinds of freedom of speech issues. But to your point on the capital T, when it comes to truth and religion, I agree. If the textbook is, in some ways, tremendously judgmental, if you read a text that says slaves obey your masters, and that truly means African American slaves obey your white racist masters, then we gotta cast it to the side, I would agree. Say now, now, but That's like if truth, thing. if truth, yeah, if truth of the capital T comes through a person who claims to be God and actually was God, then we have something completely you know, different. You know, Jesus wasn't the only guy of his time. There were a bunch of guys going around saying, yep. "I'm the Messiah." There were a couple. And what happened to there them? Were a couple. And what happened to them? I don't know. They didn't sell the they product. Were, they were they all the either killed 
but most no, of them. No, they were like absolutely. MySpace versus absolutely. Facebook. This stuff just happens. <laughs> you know, I was on the MySpace. Do you work out? You know, I'm, I'm like John the Baptist. Do your history That's now. Okay, Dude, we're doing if this you're going to bring them up. Bar Serpion, for example, it's if you're just like up, quirks of fate. Gonna, I'm glad you know the would-be messiahs, because most people don't know the would-be messiahs. I can't name them all. But there were, well, Bar Serpion was one of them. Okay. And I promise you, or Jesus Bar Jesus, he even stole Jesus' name, was another one. They tried to get movements going. No one believed that they were truly the Son of God, and so that's why their movements dispersed so quickly. Yeah. Okay, Jesus' movement took over the Roman Empire. You have to answer Christianity me. Christianity has to that, thank the how Romans. in the world they have to thank did them. that happen? Because they had roads, they had a common language, it spread Christianity like a benign virus <laughs> throughout the world, you know. Okay, keep going. Uh, Christians always talk about, you know, the Romans, you know, of course they persecuted the Christians. But if it weren't for the Romans and a common language and all those roads, I don't think Christianity was, would have spread as well as, as well as it did. Okay, so and including St. Paul, who's like the marketer of Christ. He's the guy who spread the franchise. He's the guy who got that really going. The early church. Yeah, and he wasn't That's a very... exactly right. Okay, so you're he telling me... He's a short, me, ugly guy, right? You're telling he wasn't me... wasn't like a, a pure you know, yeah. person. Right. Yeah, yeah. But he knew how to I, sell I don't know that. exactly how he was. He was like about. Roy Cohen. It was like the McDonald's brothers. My, you know what I mean? They invented the whole hamburger selling thing. And then Roy Cohn's came along and he's the one who marketed it and pushed it everywhere and made sure and then he made all the money and the mcdonald brothers are like we came up with this stuff so how did an oppressed people group who is com they were completely marginalized in every way how did they all of a sudden after eyewitness testimony and accounts that well over 500 people saw the risen jesus after he was killed how when they lost everything and they, okay, so do those kind of people die for what they There's know to be a lie? Yeah, they think Trump is do they, Jesus. Do they die no, for Jesus. what they know to be a lie? King Cyrus or what? <laughs> exactly. Okay. If we're going to mess around, we got to go to the next person. But if we're going to actually get into some serious dialogue here, come on, stick with me here. Do hey, those you people... David Hume, I like you, so you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Hume fan? I like you. Well, no, I like I'm like scarf, a Christian. Too, <laughs> 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 I know, this isn't working. But... Uh, I like uh, it. I'm being serious. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <like> case. <laughs> so anyway. All right, so you're an agnostic, non-theist. Yes, sir. What does that mean? I told you, I don't know. How does that practically, how do you live agnostic that out? Agnostic. With... How do you live down, how do you live out an agnostic, non-theistic worldview? <laughs> You got a point. It's not easy. <laughs> Otherwise, there'd be more people be like me. If, yeah. if I'm not selling, I'm not saying that my belief system is marketable. I'm not saying it's appealing. I'm not saying people are going to run to embrace it. But I think it's true based on, you know, my reason, my experience. I wasn't raised in the faith. But an agnostic position I wasn't, says I that wasn't, there is not a truth. But you're claiming right now from a truth position yeah. that there is truth. So isn't that a little bit of a contradiction? There's a provisional, like, this is what I think is going on right now, truth. That's yeah. all I can claim to. Based okay. on what I know, based on what I've experienced, based on the brain that might have been given to me by <laughs> one god or many, who knows? I just, you know, I have so to go with what I have. So it's absolutely true you got a long that there's not a truth tradition. out there. It might be bullshit, but, you know, it's a long... But wait, wait, would you agree with the statement that it's absolutely true that there's not truth out there? No, there's no truth out there. I mean, okay, but you're saying it's true that there's no truth out there, so there is truth. What the fuck is that statement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hear a chat about it. No, no, I'm Well, exactly. <laughs> It makes total sense. That's not over philosophizing things. If I don't believe in truth, I, that is a truth claim that I'm making, that there is no truth. So that's actually perfect. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's pretty clear. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yes, I believe there are things that you can assert is true. Yeah. Uh huh? What are some of those things? Gravity. I don't know. Basic scientific laws. Where do those that, laws come from? Do they come from a lawgiver? 
hey, or do they maybe, just show up, pop out of nowhere? Maybe if you can provide evidence of one, sure. Okay. We'll throw it out there. It's okay. a, we'll take it under consideration. Okay. You know. So what's your evidence for the lawgiver? What evidence do you I, live by? I wish I could come up with something, but, you know. Yeah. I know I don't know. I mean, you have so many questions to answer with your all-knowing, all-good. Oh, God? All-powerful God. Yeah. You know, lets all kinds of bad things happen. And that's just age-old, tired questions. Yeah. The Odyssey, right? Sure, sure. Why does God let bad things happen? See, I don't have to worry about those things. See, okay, so Those things don't keep me up at night. Sure. I never have a crisis yeah. of faith. Right. I never have to worry about... Do you never have about... bad things happen to you? Oh, my gosh, yes. Okay, so why don't you worry about them then? I think everybody here probably has some level go. of concern that some go. bad things will happen because most of life is suffering in a way. You know what the best line you can use that really worked on me? That got me thinking. What was that? You know, I was at a bookstore. Guy comes up to me and he tries to convert me because he could sense I was at a point of, you know, emotional vulnerability. Like sometimes students, they, hey, you get they're stressed out. <laughs> they they go got exams. <laughs> this is this, this crowd is right, dude. I know what you're doing. So anyway, even if you mean well, this is the place to come. Young people are still seeking answers. They don't think they know everything. So if you're going to try to sell them the Christianity, now's the time. And I, I'm, 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 I'm not gaining little, anything to sell. I'm, I, you know, I'm We're telling not selling books cynical. here. I don't We're not making money cynical. here. No, I know. So what am I selling? Why would I be out here I selling? Think, I think you're sincere, and I, I apologize if some of the words I use, it sounds a little, you know, I don't want to sound cynical or anything, but like I said, this is a good time to yeah. reach people. Okay, but let's go back to your evidence for God, though. The peace on suffering. I, it's, it's, my point. I, I just said, suffering is my biggest issue with God as well. It sounds like maybe your biggest issue, too. Oh, yeah, I was going to tell if you. If there is no God, yeah. where do we get an understanding of, objectively, what is good and what is evil? Why does suffering bother I don't know. So is much? religion ever on the cutting edge of those questions? There are is there religion those? always like 50 paces behind of any progress in morality that we make in this world? what you mean by is religion. Is like religion is like, all right, all right, we'll change that. You know what I mean? They're always being dragged. Into so the religious, 21st century. Religious hypocrites or no, the institution they're just, of religion they're, they're just or certain thinking. religious texts? They're just, they, you got to parse that out a little bit more. I don't, I don't know. So, that's the first point Ethics, on the Odyssey. They, Hold on, let me keep going. And then you, you brought up a great yeah, point. Sorry, We're yeah. going to stick with one here. we got a lot more to get to. So the first one here, in terms of God and suffering, what's the evidence for? I would start with, well, we believe, we buy into true right and true wrong. Something is good, something is bad. Something is great, something is evil. So that's where we start, and we are given that by God. It's not just a subjective thing. Secondly, we have no idea why God allows suffering. But if we are going to grant God the size that he is, the omniscience that he is, that he's big enough to create this entire place, you and me, then we have to be okay with understanding that maybe there actually are reasons for suffering in certain, certain circumstances. One example would be the book of Job. Job had no idea why he was suffering. It's it was a, a good dirty, lesson for us all. dirty trick yes. that Satan was playing on Job. Do you know how many thousands, perhaps even millions of people, have found solace in the life story of Job and that text? So he had no idea why he was suffering. Yeah. But great benefit came out of it.